Hello and welcome to Gone Fishing. Rainbow Trout. <laughs> I'm doing this a little differently. If you might notice through the recording of this video, I don't normally do voiceovers, but in this case, I had to. Unfortunately, my computer did a little restart on me and my program had to be reset, but I forgot to check my mic. And over on Zoom land, everybody was hearing us me fine, no problem. But when I check my main recording, I noticed that my volume was not working. So here we are. We're going to play paint the Gone Fishing. And uh, I'm going to try not to laugh at myself too much while I try to explain to you what we're going to do today. We're uh, working on a board today. And you can definitely do this on a 12 by 16 canvas. And um, if you wanted to make this a little bit bigger, you could definitely add more background scenery. If you want to check out my YouTube video over on YouTube by the lake, you'll see that uh, I've used that kind of scenery a couple times before with my pop outs and um, also just, you know, a plain, simple landscape that you can do that's quite nice as well so like I said I have a couple different um, ways of playing around with this I've done like I said this pop out before and um, I was added a little boat and another little sign that you can hang on them and um, you can see that you know, I added the background and the proportion is right off because guys, you know how they talk, right? The fish was so big. So that's why I wanted to make the boat a little bit smaller and him nice and big, oversized. And I did this on a bunch of leftover pine boards that we had from our renovations. So, uh, yeah, that's the last one left. I had done a uh, rainbow trout and a bass. And um, the favorite of mine is this pickerel actually and um, I put the price up on it because <laughs> I really don't want it to sell um, oops. Um, I grew up in Timmins if some of you don't know and we did a lot of fishing up there when I grew up and uh, pickerels and walleyes were, are, is my favorite fish to eat it's white fish, really tasty not so strong tasting like the uh, rainbow trout but yeah, you see the uh, little pop out, it had a little spacer there. And uh, it was fun to do too. But yeah, you can definitely make this bigger. And on a 16 by 20, if you wanted to adopt a little bit of both worlds together and uh, add more scenery, but you can also make a nice little small one. And it would make a great gift for any fish lover or even for yourself. Maybe you have a cottage or, you know, trailer or something like that that you want to add more nature decor something fun you know <laughs> a little bit different right but still trying to stay true to the um colors of the rainbow trout so i did play with this a couple of years ago and um i did three different fish on cutouts and um and then i had to add to the pickerel because my dad said there, that he needed teeth and more of a white spot on his tail to make him a little more authentic. And um, so hopefully if you guys are interested in learning more about the pickerel and the bass, I can definitely maybe make a uh, extra little bonus segments of uh, add-ons that you can take to change the fish and do the same kind of background. Looks kind of scary now with those teeth, eh? <laughs> but my dad said they had to be there. <laughs> so, yeah. A little bit different from my first version. Every time you do things, hopefully, you know, you'll get better and better at it. And then, again, I did decide to um, change the shape a little bit of the rainbow and uh, add some different colors to it. Alrighty. 
So yeah, I definitely like this version a little bit better than my last version. I definitely played around with a few more colors. I was googling more again some rainbow trout and then trying to get it even more authentic. Like I did the, the first version, oh, probably about seven years ago and, um, and put it aside for quite a while. And uh, being in a new area, just moved, I thought it'd be nice to uh, make some new fish. So we're going to start off with a pattern. And um, definitely it's in two parts, so you can put your words wherever you want, depending on the size of your canvas or wood board that you might have found to paint on. All right, so you can put that anywhere. <laughs> I'm trying to guess what I'm going to say next. <laughs> oh, it's kind of funny. So yeah, just maybe about an inch or so off the edge for this size anyways. And uh, that way it should still give you room for your gone fishing. And you can fold it or cut it or whatever you need to do just to kind of quickly map it out to see if you have enough room. Maybe you have to inch your fish over a little bit. I'm just doing this really quickly just to kind of show you space. And it, there's room for them there. So I'll just tuck underneath them. Right, and have room for your little curly hues. Okay, right, so we're going to have some masking tape, detack it a little bit. If it's uh, really sticky, we haven't got our base coat down yet, but sometimes that masking tape is so strong that it will pull up some paint. So just for insurance, I always like to detach my masking tape or painter's tape. And then shiny side down or dark side down. We're going to start tracing out our pattern. Yeah, I tried to make this uh, as big as possible for you. So if there's a setting in your printer, maybe you can select to have it print bigger for you. Because sometimes if it, if you notice, it'll say hit to size or print to size. And play with your options and you'll see in the preview that uh, it might look a little bigger for you and take advantage of the whole page for you, right? And not shrink it on you. So basically all you have to do is worry about all the solid lines, right? That's definitely going to map out all the important areas. And then there's some little highlight lines or marker lines, just where colors change, you know, that I kind of dotted in. All right. So they're probably going to disappear. And I think I might have forgot a line there somewhere. All right, so I'm trying to get all the important lines in there first. Right, this fin is kind of flipped over. And then right in there is going to be the band where you want that nice strong pink. All right, so that's where I kind of made that line a little bit stronger for you. Not that there's a line, but definitely uh, an important area. Right, you want to keep yourself guided with all the different colors that we're changing into. Slowly changing into you know, one and then the other and then slowly down into that pink area. So you got to try to keep yourself a little bit tight there. Follows underneath the tail. Okay. And then basically, again, those little ticks inside the fins are just the direction 
right? So you might have to look at the pattern or my picture when you get to it, because once we base coat it, a lot of those little ticks are probably going to disappear. All right, so just the color of the stripes, and then the stripes are another thing. So I just kind of ticked out the areas where you're going to be putting the colors. Right, the colors go from side to side, and then the stripes go up and down. And to make things easy, go ahead and trace out all of these three little circles there. And I'll show you how I kind of put that in there. And uh, make sure you have all your lines covered. I think I did forget one on the side of the fin <laughs> bottom of his tail there, if you see. But at the moment, I don't see it, so <laughs> we carry on. And we're going to go and start with our background. So we're going to actually work around our pattern so that way we don't have to worry about base coating so much to get those colors back up again. All right, so I used about three different blues in there, the aqua, Persian blue, And some cobalt. I'm going to put those little uh, lighter areas, the little streaks of the waves, we'll put them in after. But you still, we're going to be maybe lightening up some of the areas with the aqua, so just a little bit of white. And we'll definitely need that for the fish, too. All right, so we're going to use the smaller of the two of the painter sponges. So maybe I can get into areas a little bit better. It's just a small canvas, so... When I'm doing big canvases, then I definitely like to use my big sponge. Dampen it. Make sure you have a rag handy. Get it nice and damp, but not too wet. All right, so that's where we blot it out in the towel. Give it a good squeeze. Make sure you're getting most of that water out. All right, a lot of times I've been <laughs> experiencing at the home, the parties here in the studio and people are still not getting good coverage with their canvas and I go reach over and feel their sponge and it's still really wet. So make sure it's damp, guys, not wet. If you need more moisture, you can always put in a bit of floating medium. It's easier to control. Put just a very, very little bit in. It's harder to... Add water. Right, so mostly we're going to tip one side over in the Persian, one side in the Aqua. Start blending those two colors together. And then if you notice, I'm going to tip a little tiny bit into the Aqua uh, Cobalt. 
Okay, so that way I get almost three colors going on. So if I push flat on my sponge, I get all three colors. If I tip over on one side, then I get more dark. If I tip over on the other side, then I'll end up with more light. Okay, so just playing around, tipping your sponge back and forth to try to create those different colors and more streaky areas. And it's just like the base coat, guys. This is not the whole water look. We're going to add to it more with brushes later. But this is a great way to start getting all those streaks in, get good coverage in quick, and try and work around our fish without covering our pattern. Okay, so you're going to work from the top and work your way down is usually the best way to do it. And if you're doing a wrapped canvas, then you definitely want to start doing all around your sides as well. So you can swoop that color right over the edge and over onto your work and it'll look a little more wrapped around. So I'm just basically getting the paint in right now, pushing pretty hard. All right, so there is different degrees of pressure when you're using the sponges. At first, we definitely want to push harder to get that paint in there. But as we keep layering the colors on, we want to start lightening up on our touch. If you press too hard, you'll start erasing the color. So we just want to slowly get in there and try to get as close to the pattern as possible. If you go over a little bit, that's okay. At this point, your paint should be a little bit translucent still. So hopefully you'll still be able to see your pencil marks around your edges. Slowly working around my side, so just swoop it right over. Tipping to get it lighter. And tipping over on the other side to get it darker. A small little area in here, so don't worry about it too much right now. Basically just trying to get a base coat of mottled different colors of blue going on. And a streaky side to side motion. Turn yourself around so that you can put pressure and get more of a straight line. We're definitely going to be putting the darkest blue around all the uh, fish for extra shading. So definitely keep that in mind when you're putting your base coating. So if you press more with that dark side while you're drawing around the edges, you're already starting to pre-put some shading in there. Right? So it's just a proposed plan and knowing what to expect sometimes saves you time after. Okay, so if you see, I'm trying to push with the dark to line around the fish a little bit more. And I don't want it to look like it's lined, so I'm going to swoop out sideways to um, try to make it, again, look more like water, right? So again, just get the coverage in there for now, guys. Do the best you can with the sponge. I just wipe it off with my fingers if it gets too globby on the fish part. Wipe it out. You could go ahead and maybe erase some of it with a clean brush, but you know, you can also just go in there later with a little bit of white over it and kind of fix those areas again. This mouse is a little bit tricky there, so just do your best. Like I said, I didn't worry about it at the time it takes me to fuss. I could quickly just, oops, um, go back over it with some white to f clean it up. And you'll see in the PDF that I didn't even bother. I just went right on top with your color blends and it will cover. 
but I feel more confident too. So if you guys want to see more clear, then definitely I'll show you how I just went over things with white. Gotta push real hard on those sides, especially on wood. So now that I'm getting more coverage, I can start planning a little bit more streaky look. Okay, pushing on those colors, trying to get light and dark areas. little tiny bit darker at the top and then slowly working your way down a little bit later a little bit later get too dark pick up more light it's getting too light and pick up more dark try not to over blend I have an area there that it's still fresh paint, so it's not allowing me to layer over. If I push too hard, I end up erasing it. So there is sometimes a little bit of patience. Uh, getting the blow dryer out, drying things a little bit, and then go overing it again. And I'm just trying to get a little extra coverage in there. Lightening up on my touch so that I'm laying that paint on a little thicker with a very light touch. There we go. So I'm trying to get those streaks in there too, right? Kind of swoop around all straight across so that it doesn't look like I drew around the fish. So now I'm picking up a little bit of white with my aqua to start lightening up some areas. And definitely wherever there's some areas that just aren't covering enough, then that little bit of white will also help with any stubborn areas. So you can see I'm getting a little bit better coverage there now. And I'm more concerned about getting that swoop than I am concerned about not hitting my fish. Really, I want it to look really natural like that water's flowing straight across behind them. As long as it's not globby, you can kind of see your lines. Don't worry too much. So trying to get those streaks in there, but slowly progressing a little bit lighter. 
can always let things dry, do another coat. Not really planning these streaks and just letting them happen. And then I'm going to play off of them wherever there happen to be, then I can take advantage of those light spots and dark spots. Sometimes those edges of the wood need a second coat. See little white spots? Hope you guys saw the last video I did on YouTube with the cow horn. I was also doing it on these wood shapes. And uh, I explained a lot more in that video on all the prep. And uh, also we painted on some butterflies, so you can paint your own butterfly. And uh, I definitely went over a lot of the wood care there as well. Um, welcome sign that I did also has more information. So uh, definitely if you need more information about all the little, little things we do differently on wood, please check those ones out. And I'm just kind of scooping back some fresh paint there. I ended up pouring way too much out. And uh, if it's fresh, guys, you can do this. If it's starting to get thick and sticky, then definitely don't be doing this. Like I said, I, this paint was only out for like a couple of minutes. And um, I put way too much out. And we're not going to need a lot of this, these colors anymore. Till maybe later. Okay, so you can just pick up a 10 or 12 or something like that and so once it's dry then you'll be able to go over it and find those lines again and just put a quick white coat over it it's so much quicker doing it this way than trying to paint around this you know take it forever I, the paint will cover just fine even if you see a bit of blue under that white don't worry too much because when we start putting the colors on your fish it'll cover the rest i just trying to kind of helping it along by cleaning it up and trying to find my lines again. Right, so I'm just trying to do it very loosely and lightly so I can, I'm not covering my pattern. If you do lose some of it, just try to keep an eye on your, my original, and, uh, 
or laser pattern over it again if you have to try to line it up but you know, like I said hopefully your coverage isn't too much and that you're still faintly seeing those lines underneath A little bit pointy, but not too pointy. almost lost my line there but it's the bottom lip that kind of comes up that you see the bottom of the lip over the top opening So I'm not putting white everywhere guys. I'm just cleaning up wherever I went over with the blue Just so that well mostly for you guys to be able to see a little better too Once it's starting to dry a little bit where you started, you might be able to layer a little bit more weight on top of it. If, but don't worry too much. Like I said, try to cover it as best as you can. Alrighty, so now that the white is dry, I'm just going to go and grab just a little bit of that Parisian blue and some floating medium. And again, just clean up a little bit just behind it. If there was any areas that I didn't cover properly with my sponge, then you can just come in with that little bit of color on the edge of your brush. And again, we're going to be planning to put the shading in anyway so you know for me I'm kind of getting ahead of the game where I probably didn't put so much in until after All right so I'm noticing some areas I'd like it to be just a little bit darker here and there I want to cover all my uh, aqua so again just going in with a little bit of a loose wash with some Persian blue or ink spot, whatever your darkest is that you have, then uh, it'll help to add more depth. Right? So, wherever you're going around the edges, make sure that you're swooping it out as well because you don't want it to look like it's drawn around. 
and just kind of do it quick guys don't have to spend a lot of time right now because most likely you'll have to go over it again if you happen to go over your lines with base coating the uh, trout Sometimes we have to add depth to make other areas look lighter. Okay. Don't be afraid to turn your canvas upside down. Make life easy for yourself if you can. You'll see in this project I actually use my fingers a lot to smooth and wipe out color a little bit fingers are one of our best tools and you know, just keeping things all nice and clean you so you could do this stuff a little bit later if you wanted to it all depends on how you did on your base coating around the fish Pick up a little bit of aqua if you need to lighten up some areas. But just remember you need to pick up a little bit of cobalt or dark to merge in it so it softly blends in. Right? They don't look like obvious stripes. And I lost a little bit of my cobalt look. I can always float a little bit of cobalt in there too. Right? So this is where you can get some extra coverage on any of the areas that you might not like. Again, I'm more worried about streaking side to side and coverage. Nowhere in particular I'm trying to copy just letting it go. Every body of water is going to look different. Looking too light, you can just do a wash with just floating medium and a little bit of Parisian or a little bit of cobalt, and that'll help add more depth back in again. I have no clue what I'm saying half the time. I'm just kind of guessing and trying to remember what I said. <laughs> So again, hopefully my hands aren't messing you up, doing gestures of God knows what I was saying at the time. But I think I pretty much remember, it's just it may not be right on cue. <laughs> Good to let it dry. Go 
especially when your weight is all dry for sure, then you can start putting in our colors. We're first going to use sap green. Then it's going to trans into a teal. Then we're going to play around with a little bit of cobalt. We have that on our plate already. And then we're going to use pink melon. A really pretty soft pink color, a little peachy. If you don't have it, you can always use magenta, add a little bit of yellow, daffodil yellow into it, maybe a little bit of white, and that'll give you a little bit more of a corally color. And then, of course, we're going to be lightening it up to make it more like a pastel with white as well. Then we're going to play around with some uh, lime green. And you don't need a lot of these colors, guys, so don't put out a lot. And then if you want something a little bit stronger green, you can always play around with uh, bright green. If you don't have bright green, you can always mix a little bit of sap into your lime green, and that'll darken things too. I don't even think actually I use much of that bright green. Oops. Oh, this is what happens when you wipe too hard on your background. It's not dry yet. Oh, I guess I have to show you how to do a repair. <laughs> oh, I got yellow from the bottom of my, my uh, palette. Because my background was still sticky and I laid the paint off. I kind of peeled the paint off the bottom of my palette there. Oh well, we'll carry on. And I think we used a little bit of daffodil yellow in there too. So mostly it's all done with a 16 or 12. Well, probably get you in there a little bit easier. I'm gonna multi load the first two colors together. Make sure your brush isn't too wet. I'm gonna use mostly the teal with a little bit of sap, so you have a two thirds gradient. So we start getting that shading around the back side of the fish and then start introducing some lighter colors and different colors. Okay, starting right at the back. Sometimes I'll swoop left just to get the stroke started and then I'll carry on all the way across the top. Just so I don't get a big glob at the top. And it's just even pressure, guys. It's not a lot. Just a stripe across the top using the flat of the brush. And then as you get closer to the eye area, you're going to start flipping your brush a little bit sideways so that you can get a little narrower gradient. Uh, in front of his eye area. His eye area actually is mostly all the greens and teals. So we're just going to cover a little bit of that area at the back with the teal and then we'll introduce some lime or bright green. Don't want this to be a big area. 
And then as we get the coverage, right, make sure you keep adding a little bit more paint to get a good good coverage. We'll be happy with each row as you move down before you move down. And then we're going to wipe off our brush and then add just a little bit of white into that teal. Okay, so we can start getting more of that pastel -y look. And I'm going to move down on my gradient. I'm not worried about the sap green anymore. Whatever's left is left. I just want to mostly just move it down a little bit more now with some white. Flip flop around. So now you have a little lighter gradient at the bottom. Uh, add white at the base of every color before you change colors. And slowly get a little bit more pastel blends as we're getting to the middle of the belly. Or to the side of his body, actually. Let's clean my brush. Make sure I squish out that moisture. Well, actually, we're gonna back up. So if you still have paint in your brush, leave it there. I forgot the tail. And a little area here that I accidentally overpainted the blue. So hopefully you guys see that part in your pattern still. So I'm just adding a little bit more white just to get the, <laughs> that blue lightened up a little bit more and I'll adjust and fix it later. And you don't have to worry guys, it always can be fixed. It's the thin stripe. Make sure you add some white along the very edge of that green so that it'll transition into the next color. And so you see how I'm flipping some really light, light white in to lighten up the edge of that teal. The dirty white teal. Then you start picking up a little bit of green. Just a little bit of floaty medium. I cleaned my brush. The floating medium is going into the wet, dirty teal white. And then I'm introducing the green underneath it. Just with one color for now. You have to put a little bit of teal in there. You can just to kind of blend it in. And just very little above the eye. And adding more white again. Every color that you add, you have to add more white. Very, very important for the transitions. And it almost pushes your line back up a little bit again. That whole next area has got to be with the cobalt, so we want to Make sure you got that room in there. Before that hard line.
a little bit more cobalt. And if you need to uh, multi-load the green and the blues together to get them to blend together a little bit better, you can. But we want the pastel color, so we have to do the transition first and then add white. Right. I'm adding white to both sides so I can lighten up those colors. The blue has to go right in front of that line. Okay, so you don't see an obvious line, but I put that there because it's very important for you to try to get those colors up above it. So that blue has basically got to go right along that whole line. A little bit of white as you go. It doesn't get too dark. And this is where I was saying I use my fingers a lot to blend out to remove the color so it doesn't cover too much overlap. When everything looks like it's not blending, and you just try to add a little bit more white to soften. And the blue doesn't go in, in the gills, it goes just right behind the gill. And every time I wash my brush, you'll see me squishing out that moisture. A little bit of cobalt, a little bit of white. I want to soften that line now. So I'm adding white right on top of that graphite or carbon paper mark. Keep adding white to cover all that pencil mark to soften that right out. You want it to have a nice little white band in there before you start putting the pink melon. I go back and pick up some green and blue together. Just so I can merge these two together again. Well, we have the blue and the greens going on, actually. We should add some gradient starting in his tail as well. And that's going to be side to side.
that white in there to soften the edge. I didn't adjust my fin properly, so I'm just adding a little bit of white to uh, fix the shape there. Making sure that's nice and light and white. Now for the pink melon. You want to put the white at the top so that it stays in the white area. And that other little line is just a marker for where the pink ends, right? You don't see any stripe there. Just to guide you on uh, where to stop there. So smaller by that area and then it goes wider by behind the gills there. And so I'm slowly going to just work on all these little areas now, trying to get the pink melon in and using that to shade along all the lines. I have a little bit more floating medium so I can just get like a blush look. Right? You don't want a lot of coverage, you just want like a soft pastel y blended color. And adding more white. I'm using my fingers. I didn't want to unload more paint off my brush. I just wanted to kind of soften what was there. And so if you're just really light with the coverage there, you can kind of st just still see where his gills are going to be. Again, blending out to the white on each side of the pinks, so then that way you can transition into the greens underneath his mouth. I 
And make that pink melon just a little bit darker inside his mouth, less white. Not blue enough in that area, so I just wanted to kind of pump up the color a little bit more. All right, and then just kind of erase it with my fingers. I'm trying to create that little bit of a white glow in there too still, right? Now I'm going to do all the fins with all the pink melon around all the edges, leaving it lighter on the inside. It is easier for you to do one side and then, so do all the top sides of everything and then spin your canvas around upside down so you can get all the undersides of things right so basically you got to get all the way around but you know try to make your life a little bit easy in the direction that is easy for your hand to go right and then just know that you have to do all the undersides later right when you flip it around Kind of lighten up that little area there because I went too dark. <laughs> kind of messed it up, so I have to do some fixing in that area. So just hopefully you didn't go too dark and mess that up. That's not a problem. We can always adjust that area later. Still concentrate on getting all the base coat of everything done. And I kind of messed up on that shape a little bit too for that back. And... 
little too round. It's going to be more square. <laughs> but I'll fix it. It's going to blend up the sides a little bit with that pink melon. Like I said, guys, sometimes it's easier just to flip the canvas upside down. Get that white in there to soften it into the green. Rolling a joint now, so mute all this. And double checking the sides now. Just want to make sure that's kind of soft looking, but definitely I need to add more pink melon in there behind that flipped bin. Slowly work it in there, guys. Very softly. You can always make things brighter and darker white is your best friend in this project it's really going to help soften and be able to blend all those pastel shades. That thin is from the other side, so you can see the tail end of it. Okay, so let's just play around here with some lime green and sap green to do part of his lip. So we're just doing that one top area and then leaving this now. I'll softly blend it a little bit, but we're going to be adding another transition so it's going to go from the lime green into the yellow make that line a little bit soft And there's a little bit of a dent underneath their chin, actually. You can kind of pronounce that a little bit more, maybe, than I did last time. And then again, just flip a little bit of white or something, or softly let that disappear so we can change it into 
more yellow tones. Again, I want to add just a little bit of green here and there on this belly just to uh, kind of add some depth, dirty the white a little bit. Still playing with that area again, trying to transition it out a little bit, but the shading is definitely going to help that you're going to add into that to help separate things. Again, just trying to make it look like it's kind of disappearing into his belly. Right. Don't want to make it too pink into there. Add a little bit more white to soften. Slowly working my way into that flipped fin. Alright, so I've got to add all that shading a little bit under it. But uh, just that little bit of a soft pink, just to start some of the shading. And then now we're going to add more pink behind it. And so you want to add shading to both sides of basically all your lines. Go ahead and put more <laughs> pink melon in there because I will be. <laughs> Make that a little bit more all consistent pink melon all behind here. But you want it to fade up to that white area a little bit. All right, so I'm just slowly doing it so, so I can get the color to slowly get darker. Wet on wet, kind of with that weight. Then I'm going to start shading all inside there. Got a little bit of blue in there, that's okay. You notice in the other one, it has little hints of green and stuff like that in it too. So don't worry too much. And uh, it's the trick of this fish really is, is a, a layered glazing effect that you will do over it with a couple different degrees of shading. Okay, so first we're doing a bigger band of all this pink. And then if you notice, I've got darker shading going on around it, but there's still undertones of that pink showing through too. So we got to kind of layer this in a way where you're uh, playing with the floating medium a little bit more with shading and glazing. And it'll all come together. Lots of extra shading practice in this project for sure. Get your gradients. 
all blended in properly and slowly building up the intensity. Yeah, I think I'm about to notice that my fin is off. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> it's bugging me sitting there looking at it right now. But I guess I just need more pink in the hut. Actually, all dark, pretty dark in there. A little bit of pink around the rim. And then we'll add to that. Now we're going to start playing around with some of those yellows. With the lime green. Back to back. Kind of zigzag it in there. Blend with your fingers. I added just a little bit of white with the yellow just to give you better coverage. Anywhere there's some light green, you want to try to kind of soften that area out with the yellows. And then the yellow will transition out to the white and then into another color. Just kind of pop things up a little bit more. Make that those greens a little bit brighter. Now we want to mix a little bit of the pink melon or something into the um, yellow if you need to get this to be blended more. Just a little bit of white should do it. Soften that back line. And then I just snuck in the yellow, just flip-flopped it in, just to brighten up that green again. And then it'll also make that pink area a little bit more corally. Just a little hint of yellow in with the pink melon. Well, I guess it's a good time to fix that little oops. <laughs> Uh, 
Gotta add some white in there, get the coverage, and then darken it again. Adding a little bit more white to transition those areas a little bit more. Right. Brighten up the green a little bit. Alrighty, so now it's time to add all the shading. Start by adding some green around the eyes. With some sap and lime green. Add a little bit of white just to kind of transition. Blur it out. Gotta keep picking up all those colors and <laughs> kind of blend it in a little bit. That was just a little bit of teal. I didn't want it too blue, I just wanted to kind of warm up the green a bit.
So now I just took my little number one strip liner, just to kind of map in where the eye colors are going to go. I use the lime green in the eye. And I'm just trying to whiten up any area that I might have went too big with my shading. It's just to start it. You can we're gonna definitely add more to this eye. I just figured while we're working around the eye, we can start putting some color in there. Let that dry and then we can brighten it up a little bit more. Before I start the shading, I want to make sure that some of the colors are intense enough, so just playing around a little bit loosely. So now I'm making a little bit of a concoction with some sap green and a little bit of burnt umber. Okay, so it's just going to make it a little bit more drabby brown green. Trying to find a clean spot so I can show you guys. But it was hard to do it on the side of my plate, so. Now we're going to go around all the edges again. But a little tighter, a little bit smaller. We don't want to cover that pink. We just want to add depth to the pink. Still want to have use a little bit more floating medium on the one side of your brush so that you can really blend it out, get that translucent color out. All right, so now you're seeing we're getting like a that dirty burnt pink melon. If you tried to multi-load your pink melon and brown together all in one stroke to do this, it would end up taking over and you just wouldn't get the brightness come through. So for some things we need to just go and layer a little bit more. And then we have more control and you'll see that this color will trans transition over all of the colors nicely. Right, so you're going to be adding the shading now over everything. Underneath things, especially, try not to go too far with this, that one uh, pin there. Gotta wipe that out because it got too dark and too far in. There we go. A little bit more subtle. And again, I'm going to work under everything and then I'll flip my canvas around upside down to get the other side of things better. And it's going to show some green through it, guys. You really don't want it to be too brown. It's like a greeny brown.
Just work around till you can't flip your wrists around anymore and then just keep progressing on all the areas that you can reach easily to and then flip your canvas around upside down it'll be much quicker Deepen those gills. Everywhere we put the pink, we want to darken it now just slightly. Trying to find my gills. Deepening his lip area a little bit more. But I don't want to put too much shading around on the inside, so I'm going to put the shading on the outside more. Bring that up right underneath the mouse. And then now inside the mouse. Both sides. You can always go in and darken the inside of the mouse a little bit later. I'll work all on the inside of the lipped pin. The fin's not really supposed to close at the base there. You know, it fades off, but I kind of made it a little bit more narrow in this one. Brought it in too far compared to my other one. Now that I'm looking at it on a different angle. <laughs> on the uh, narrator's view. <laughs> Lay that brush flat so that it fades out. It's not just a strong line. 
It's wet. Just wait for it to dry and then do the other side of things. I gotta be knowing that this is uh, off soon here. Because uh, I know I do fix this. There we go. <laughs> I just noticed it's got to be a little bit more like a shark. A little bit more straight. I lost my pattern, obviously, there. A little bit on that tail. Oh, got to straighten it out at the top part, too. Put that pink back in there. Let that dry and come back to it with the shading. If you do any shading and you feel like you've lost your pink, then you can always come back and adjust it a little bit. Add a bit more pink in there. Especially with those two little under fins. Because we're going to do it like another little area in there. So I want to make sure that outer edge has got some nice color. And then I'm going to come back in and add more shading. And I'm trying to add that little greeny, pinky, kind of soft color on the edge. Try not to over blend them. Alright, so now we can flip everything upside down and start doing all the other sides of everything. On the underside of his belly. Let's see, see how that shading looks really nice over all the colors. Blends everything all together. But just remember that anything that you're going to have, look, see the behind of, right? You want that fin to look like it's sticking out so you got to put more shading behind it than you do on it everything's all nice and soft looking you often see me go over things again intensify it a bit more at a time just because sometimes i'm afraid to go too dark the first time too And I'm still not happy with that transition of the belly. And I'm just kind of remind myself to. Lots of floating medium, my brown mixture there. I'm 
It's adding a little bit more shading on the other side of that rim. And also just on the other underside of the lip. Some areas, if you notice, they look a little bit more green on his tail, then I might have picked up a little bit more green than brown in those areas, right? So again, layering the greens over the pinks, you're getting that different color of mutedness. If you try to ma put those two colors together to create a color, you'll end up with a very drobby, drobby color. So this way, you're putting cool colors over warmer colors, you're starting to get a little bit more muted blends. So really, uh, it's an easy project, but it isn't, right? You gotta really um, get loose with trying to blend these colors in. Right? Knowing that the white is going to be your savior all the time. Not getting a transition, we need to add more white. And open up that area coming in again, just adding a little bit more white to pastel it with some floating medium. I still want it to look pinky and yellowy, just very, very, very subtle. I've got to fix that guy again. Right, just popping in a little bit more pink again. And now I'm in the shading. Almost like makeup, you're just kind of trying to get that blushy look. Back to our dirty green, some brown, push that floating medium right up there so you can get some nice thin lines that you can. Have strong color at the edge, but lots of floating medium. Forgot to do this edge here. This with edges, I think it's just mostly with the greens. If you notice, I didn't put too much pink on that side. Too wet. I 
And if you have too much floating medium, then it doesn't really give you any coverage. Checking to see if things are dry. Gotta brighten that mouth up a little bit more. As you notice that you need to keep an eye on your edges, keep everything nice and clean. A little bit more depth in there, and so it would be a shadow. adding some more cobalt because I don't want it to go too dark because your sap green on the fish is quite dark and if you go too dark on the outside then your fish won't stand out so if you're going to put anything then maybe just a little bit of Persian blue under the fish Alrighty, so like I said earlier, sometimes it's easier just to cut it down to size so you can get rid of all that extra paper and you can see a little bit better on where it's going to fit. And add a little bit of tape on the top there, just lightly. I didn't push on the fish part, I just kind of pushed on the paper a little bit. Because I'm always worried about lifting up my paint with that tape, because it happens to me a couple times now. Alright, and then just go over all your letters. Make sure you can see it with the black graphite. If you've gone too dark with your blues, then you might have to use the white graphite paper, but I think we can see pretty good with that blue. Okay, so first you're going to base coat the little bobber all white. That way you can get it nice and bright red. You don't have to worry about those that line right away. Yeah, I know you guys can't see it very good, but 
As long as you can see your transfer, that's all that really matters. And then what I'm actually going to use for these letters this time is a number two. Now you can use whatever you like. You can use a number one or a script liner. I just find with the coverage on the width of these letters that the number two just fits right in there perfectly. You can push on it sideways on the chisel a little bit if you want a little bit more thinner areas. And you can just go over it a little bit wider in some areas. So definitely some of the wider areas I worry about the edge on one side and then I will worry about the edge on the other side. I want to make it a little bit wider, bring it around. I just want a nice even coverage and then with all of white lettering a lot of times you have to go over it again twice. So the first time will take you a little longer. I like said, just cover this all in white for now. If you put red on a white wall, a gray wall, or a black wall, you'll get three different colors of red. And because we want to use the nice bright apple red, we really want that intensity. We want to bring that value back up again. So we, we need to get that white under it. Hopefully you guys have jumped on my color theory class. Okay, we dived in real deep in another course. I have a free one on the YouTube that's just the intro to uh, the concept of this deeper level. And then uh, we definitely went in a lot deeper. And I've added it now into my ultimate package deal and that's 14 courses now that's uh, part of an intro first six of all the basic stroke work that you're going to practice and then it evolves into the next up to the 14 with full flowers and there's loads of uh, bonus projects along the way and then we've done a couple boot camps and challenges of one stroke along the way so I've added all the recordings of that as well so you have lots of extra troubleshooting sessions and uh, again bumping up those flowers to advanced levels So if you haven't jumped on my full complete intro to one stroke, ultimate package deal, um, that's basically where I teach you all of the tips and tricks of everything that uh, you need to know about one stroke. And then of course, through all these projects, I'm going to be pushing you to try harder things, try different brushes, different ways of doing things. So, uh, yeah, just push on that brush flat. It's all just flat strokes. And it's about the exact same width as your size two. Just make sure you got a good size two. 
They're probably one of the first brushes that get wrecked in your value set. For some reason, we overload them and wreck the chisel on them. And even a part of the uh, 14 courses is even another course that is geared all to tiny brushes. So if you want to learn a little bit more about how to manipulate these tiny little brushes and multi-loading them, creating flowers and tiny little bugs, uh, I have a whole course just on tiny painting too. Just a happy medium load of paint, not too globby, not too thin. Keep adding a little bit of paint to your brush at a time. It's nice and smooth. S's are always tricky. Alright, so just remember that you're pushing on it to get it in fat in some areas. Turn your brush a little bit on a, almost on an angle sideways to get it coming in a little bit s slimmer. Punch on it a little bit fatter and then bring it in a little slimmer. Just remember guys, we will be putting a black line around the outside too, and that often will clean things up a little bit too. So if you got a little too fat in areas, then you could always put black on top of it and make it look a little bit thinner again. always easier to pull the brush towards you than trying to pull it sideways or up.
Mm -hmm. By the time you finish all your letters, that might be dry enough to come over and do a quick second coat. And then later when you come back and do a second coat on your letters, your words, then you should be able to start with a uh, coat of red. And we'll let that dry. Okay, so now take a look at your fish again. You stepped away for a little while, you took a break with your words, and you know, definitely there's always little areas that you see after, oh, I could have added more there, or I forgot to put color more in an area you know, I'm seeing now that uh, I should have put in a little bit more darker shading in areas or a little bit more green in areas so I want to just kind of make sure that I'm happy with the things that are supposed to be behind right should look a little deeper and dip more darker. Imp in second coats wherever you need it. Right in front of his nose there, I didn't put any shading on the other side. And ears that were wet before, they couldn't really get dark enough. Just double checking to make sure I didn't forget any areas.
So now I'm making a gradient with just burnt umber and floating medium. I'm creating like an inner fin inside the fin, about the same shape. And I just use burnt umber for all the extra little lines that we're going to put in now in the fins. Yeah, so we can let that dry a little bit if you want before you add more in there. Okay, so you can start putting in your lines. You just use chisel strokes if you want, or what I did was actually did more like a shading. Doing the lines and shading. Okay. Depending on what you want to do. It's all wet. The nice thing is that you can just kind of go over it all and smooth it all over and start over or dry it. Alright. You're not getting the looks that you want. Wipe it out. Dry it up. And then go over them again. And just soft little stripes. They don't have to be too, too dark. They can be a little translucent. Work our way down, I guess. If all your other shading is dry, then if you need to erase anything, then it's very easy. Make sure you have clean floating medium. A little bit of a circle to it, not too straight. Make sure you like each line before you move down to the next line. Now you intensify your gills with one color. It should be dry enough. Just gonna add just a couple of little swoops, a circle kind of. Just like another smaller little layer. I don't like that one. Too dark. Too much color in my brush. I have to squish some out. 
your fluffy medium gets too dirty after a while, you gotta wipe it out. Clean your brush, start over. And then for the tail, you know, you can do it all in one direction, but what makes it kind of neat too is that you can do one side working your way towards the middle. And then you're going to work from the other side towards the middle. And then just as you're getting too close to the other line where you know you're going to touch the back of that stroke with your brush, you stop and then finish with just a couple chisel strokes in the middle. And then we're going to let that dry. Because you can still add a little bit more shading and depth in there if you want to after you put all your lines on. I definitely enjoyed playing with this one. You know, I I think I, I definitely am the type that loves all the extra little details and shading. And I used to be an airbrush artist uh, at one time in the nail industry. I used to airbrush tiny little nails. And I just always loved that flawless fade. And I guess that's what one thing that really attracted me to one stroke was the fact that we can get those gradients of different degrees of dark and lightness and blending two colors together and um, I used to do a lot of that with the airbrush so it's not always easy with all the extra layering that traditionally we have to do and um, yes we are doing a lot of layering a lot of glazing and slowly blending in those colors um, but so much faster than traditionally and still stealing a lot of the one stroke tricks to be able to uh, manipulate your brush so that you can use parts of it or you know all of it you know using the chisel using it flat you know all the different stroke work uh, things that we can adapt into our projects as well and of course my favorite the finger <laughs> no, that didn't sound very good actually but um, <laughs> uh, yeah we're just, we're just rubbing it out and fading it out with your finger getting rid of that excess paint so it doesn't cover and keeping it thick where I want it to be and you know thinner and not so globby I, I I don't mind seeing a lot of texture in my paintings, but uh, definitely there's a time and place for it. And there's some times that you just want to try to create a very smooth look. So uh, working it slowly with your floating mediums. Again, stepping back and seeing how that looks. You know, it just seemed like it was still too bright or not blended into the fish properly you know you can still add more shading on top of these lines once they're dry 
You know, if things are looking too brownish, add a little bit more green. If they're looking too green, add a little bit more brown, you know, just to try to get that nice soft blend of natural colors. But uh, definitely some areas you want it to be a little bit more green. Or the fade of the green coming in and then just that little line of brown to deepen things a little bit more. You know, play around with your eyes a little bit. Or your eye, you only have one. Um, but yeah, I see with this one I definitely got a little egg shape going on. So I'm, now I'm just going to spend the time to fix the shape of it, bring that round down a little bit more because it's just too eggy looking. Right, so I need to bring some white down over my shading. Right, once you know you're pretty much done with adding all your colors on the face, then it's just a quick tweak, right? So if you need to go back in and add a little more shading to fix your eye, then it's just a small little area. But, um, yeah, don't make fish eyes too oval. They definitely are more bubble, round kind of style eye. Trying to lighten up that area a little bit more. And then I'm going to grab some more fresh green. I can fix the bottom of that circle a little bit more. It's almost cut off at the bottom. So he's looking down at the bobber. <laughs> The more space you leave behind the eye, it'll change the view. So if you look at my original, it's pretty much even all the way around the eye. This time I'm making it a little bit different. I'm making them look down more, so I need more space behind the iris area. And now I'm just softening it a little bit with a bit of dirty white. Just loosely trying to get a gradient going on with my liner brush. Well, overall, I think uh, I'm pretty happy with the colors. You definitely want to make sure you're happy with that before you start putting all your little dots on. And um, we'll finish the eye first here. Just need a tiny little bit of black for now. We can let that black dry while we're doing some other little touch-ups. Finishing your words or whatever little extras you want to add by this point. Sometimes I didn't do it in the original, but 
Again, I'm trying to create a little darker crease in his mouth. So, uh, I'm just put just a little bit of black or darken the brown. If you feel like your brown's not dark enough, you can always sm put a smidgen of black in your brown. So last little touch-ups on the water. And now you can definitely get a little bit more specific. And uh, intensify some darker areas. So if you see I'm going a little darker right in the middle of darker areas because the darker you make these areas look then the lighter your areas will already look you don't have to keep trying to lighten things okay, so i'm just making sure that i'm happy now with my depths i'm making a loose wash over things Lots of floating medium. It's a little bit dirty with blue, but that's okay. Pick up a little bit of white. And uh, we can start skimping in a little bit more of a wave look. Okay, so where I usually like to put those in is just under some light areas. Or on top of, I picked up black by accident there. So you're going to skimp them up just on top of those darker areas. Just under the lighter areas. Let's try that again. I did that too close to my little black pile there that I made. Again, just kind of grazing around that edge of that blue. Making it a little bit random, not so straight across. It's okay too. And just kind of making this like whimsical waves. They're not really you know, focused anywhere, just kind of random, brick layered. Sorry, guys, can't see the top of my canvas. I guess I'm so involved on these waves, I just didn't move the camera for you. Again, I'm just kind of putting them here and there, too. Right? See, my brush is loaded with the white on the top, the way I'm skidding across. You can also skid with the white loaded at the bottom where you're flipped over and pushing the paint down. See, I remember this spot coming. 
music. I was talking live when I first did that. But yeah, it's still fresh in my mind from the class and um, definitely lots of tricks that I want to make sure that you guys were understanding that I had to narrate. And uh, thank you for your patience through this video here. I'm pretty sure I covered every area that uh, I originally talked about. But definitely any time, any course, any project, you know, if you feel like you have more questions or you want to practice a little bit and um, send that practice to me through my Facebook Messenger, then uh, I'll be able to see a lot through pictures and uh, kind of guide you if you're just need input. So you're trying to skimp this behind the fish in a way too, where it looks like the water was going, keep going, but you know, just that couple of strokes there that kind of joined on both sides just to make it look like it was in the same body of water, kind of, same kind of wave. Right? Some are going to be attached to the fish, some are going to be, you know, away from the fish, fish, right? Just kind of makes it look more natural. But not all of them. And try not to go too, too close, guys, with them. Right? Very, very thin, very subtle. See how I'm pushing down to get those waves to look like they're rolling in towards me. If you do your brush the other way, I know I did both of them, but can you kind of see how if your brush is up, it looks like the waves are going away from you? These ones are all coming towards. So again, just here and there in between your words. Maybe a little bit. Very, very, very gentle touches. Lots of floating medium, but still having strong enough white on the tip to create your color. Okay, some are very subtle. Noticing any areas again, I can't just leave it alone, eh? <laughs> Oh, go step away, step away. Stand three feet back and squint your eyes. <laughs> Nobody's looking at it that closely like you are right now. <laughs> They're only gonna look at it for about 30 seconds and go, wow, and that's it. Maybe a minute or so if they really wanted to evaluate. Oh, look at all the colors they used. Right? Just making sure everything is really nice and soft and blended. It's a little bit more bright green look, right? Looking too brown under his chin.
putting a little bit more of that greeny teal back in there too. Again, trying to get that depth. Just doing a little bit of a wash. A little bit of teal and sap with floating medium. So now we're ready for our dots. Making a milky, translucent kind of brown. And then over to the side, I want to add a little bit of black. So I'm making a translucent wash with two colors. And there's some areas I want to kind of use the brown, some areas I want to use the black. Right? I don't want all my dots to be the same color. So I'm going to play around with a little smaller dots and definitely darker dots at the back because you're in a darker gradient. Right? And they're smaller because they're further away around the top of the head, right? That way it kind of makes it, adds to your 3D look. And then as you keep coming down a little bit lower in every little layer, like go across the fish in layers, right? So that you're kind of keeping an eye on the depth perception. And then as you're coming closer to the side of the fish, you're going to get a little bit lighter brown. And a little more translucent is okay too. That'll give you a lighter brown too. And then slowly, maybe a bit bigger, a little bit bigger. Almost like a watercolor look, some of these dots. And then, uh, you know, it does take long for them to dry a little bit. And then you can look at them. And if you want to make them darker or bigger, you can always make them, you know, different sizes. And just random dots, guys. They're not like perfect, perfect little dots. Maybe some of the little tiny ones are, but as they get bigger, you want them to be a little bit more squiggled, not perfect, just kind of random. And keep an eye on the original for placement, where to stop, right? Because there's a good space in the middle there that doesn't have any. You can always go back and make some of them darker or make some of them bigger. But uh, I definitely try not to go too big right now. And so I'm just using my uh, number two flat again so that I can get, you know, some bigger ones and. And I'm working down lower. I'm just using my number one script liner. The 
just to kind of make them random daddy. This is where our fish is going to start coming to life now. Alright, so you can kind of look at it as a whole with all your dots. And uh, like I said, you can always go back over some of them and make some of them a little bit darker or a little bit bigger. And uh, sometimes like the brown ones, I'll just maybe hit a little bit of black off over to the side just to make some of the dot a little darker and not all 100% one color. Okay, so you have some translucent and solid colors coming through on each, especially the bigger dots. And as you can dry, as it dries, you can kind of see how it's starting to maybe be a little bit too light. Then I'll just kind of like edge it a little bit. Almost like cougar dots in a way. Couple down here, I think. And every fish, I mean, they some have less dots, some have more dots, some have, you know, they're all going to look slightly different, even though they're all the same species. Slowly disappear. Smaller as you get down to the bottom of the mouse. Alright, so you got 
yourself some inky black and we're going to try and get these eyes a little bit more aligned definitely if you need to practice get them uber uber thin like this go and do all the blacker on your lettering first to loosen up <laughs> then come back and finish your eye but just know that you can erase if you let your eye dry and you come around and you don't like your liner then you can always come and do it again like I just have to do <laughs> Just dry, try again, lighter touch, less water. Just enough to say you're putting a little line there. My little too handy, clean, ready to erase. And I just picked up a little bit of white and doing tiny little ticks. One bit, bit smaller than the other. And then you can always use the liner to add a little highlight somewhere. And it's supposed to be a wet fish, right? So you could put, you know, little shine lines here and there. Brighten up some areas. Very subtle, you know, not too bright. Maybe in the middle of the gill here to kind of just make that pop out a little bit more rounded looking. It's very, very uh, subtle little white shine lines just to say maybe his mouth was wet you know yeah i think that's looking good Trying to make it look more round. <laughs> so just, it's a back and forth cat and mouse game kind of sometimes when you're trying to fix your white and then you hit it with black and then you got to hit your picture black or you hit it with white and you know, but try to take your time and make sure that things are dry is the biggest trick that I could offer you so that you can erase if you have to okay so now i'm just going over my letters really quickly with my never two script liner and literally quickly we're at the point now where you don't want to watch me do these letters again but definitely oops go over it again and make that white nice and bright It's a lot easier just to kind of fill it in a little bit, uh, just to get the extra coverage the second time. That's much better. Then we can go and get the apple red.
and finish our bobber. So the bottom half, a little bit of a smile there. Let me make it look like it's round. And this size, I would just make it one color. If I was making it a little bit bigger, maybe, then I'd put more detail, maybe shade it with berry wine or something to make it have a little bit more dimension. But we're going to be lining it all just like we're doing the letters, so it'll all have a little extra dimension there added to it. A bit more red topper there. Where it actually attaches to the line if you don't know anything about fishing. And it just kind of floats in the water. And if it sinks, then you know you got fish on. I'm just kind of amusing myself. So I'm <laughs> watching myself. Uh, coming up with more stories maybe for you. The different stories that I told you. If you were with me live at the Zoom I might have came up with some different stories for you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, definitely it's a lot of fun to do something different. And uh, share my experience with you on how I try to get these colors blended together. Have a little bit of inky black going on again. Not too inky though when you're doing liners around words. It's just a little bit thicker than curly Q. Right? You want the coverage, but you want nice thin thin lines. So just play with it until you're happy. Knock some of it off, because I always find that when you're first mixing all that water in, we have way too much on our brush. You almost have to knock some off and use it a little bit, and then it gets better as you keep using it. Always try to pull whenever possible. Try not to go sideways too much. And if you are, you have to move the brush so that the tip is following the direction that you're pulling it from. Otherwise, you'll skid. All right? You see, you can pick up to get around that corner. And it's just like driving a car around the corner. You got to slow down a little bit. Right. I can only go around so far and then I run out of paint or I'm going to skid so I got to stop and then pull the rest towards me again. Tiny little loop there at the top. Ties to the line. And it just helps pop things up again clean things up this is your opportunity to kind of fix things if you went too thick with your white and slightly cover some of it make it thinner again and my white is nice and dry i don't like how fat i put that i can always erase some of that fatness of the black. Right. It's a lot harder to erase on the inside of the letter. Definitely, hopefully, you'll be, uh, if you have a problem, it'll be the inside, on the water side.
going to be comfortable going flip flop flip flop If you're left-handed, then it'll be easier for you to pull the brush the other way. down Down, down, down. <laughs> and you do all your acrosses. Kind of loosen up and get into the groove of things. Yeah, that makes that pop up a lot nicer. Do you see how shiny the other one is? That's because I've already varnished it. So if you're going to take pictures of it to share in the group and let everybody know that you took my Gone Fishing Rainbow Trout class, make sure you take pictures before you var put the extra varnish on if you want it for outside use. It's, uh, it's really hard on the glare to get a nice picture. Right. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining me, guys. Let me know if you want more fish classes. Definitely, we can cover those other two fish if you like. And add it to a little fish series of gone fishing. A little shine line there. I always add shine lines into the curly cue too. I didn't in the original, but I sometimes like adding little bits of highlights to them. And sometimes you can multi-load your brush with black and 
weight, but it's sometimes hard. So if you put the black down first and then just kind of skimp in just a very subtle white along the edge of it, kind of gives it a little bit more of a 3D look to it. <laughs> you know what? I think this gone fishing actually needs one more thing. You gotta pop something up a little bit differently, right? I kept debating. Should I put bubbles? Should I put some sort of splashes? He's not underwater, so not bubbles. So I was thinking maybe some splashes. <laughs> maybe, eh? Something a little bit different. Uh, let's put one here, and one over here, and maybe a little guy over here. Okay, you can always use some chalk to play around and see if you want to do something or not, just see if you get that vibe. And, um, yeah, you know, little droplets. Definitely from the water splashing from him being caught. And yeah, we could still put like a little tiny wet spot on his head. If we wanted to as well. I have little tricks about doing uh, water droplets or dew drops. And... Again, with that floating medium and multi-loading, just one corner of your brush. And we're going to make a little bit of a translucent black or licorice. We can add a little bit of depth to our bubble all around the edge with that darker color. Bring that down. And you'll see little bits of the background come through the water. Making those little water droplets bounce. Don't want it too, too heavy. Rinse some of it away. Before it sets. Don't want it to be a solid line. You want to have a little bit of a soft gradient. Then we're going to add a little bit of shading underneath. And we don't want it to be that long. 
For you guys that have never seen water droplets before, done the one stroke way. <laughs> I did a, a fruit series. And we did a bunch of little water droplets on there. Okay, so we just want to add that little bit of shade under it now on the sides. Right. So that way it gives it that little bit of a pop. From the water. Shading It's better to go slow with this black because definitely sometimes it could be too heavy. And once we get the shapes that we're looking for with the black, then we're going to tuck in a little bit of reverse highlighting with white. Okay, so again, just that little tiny bit of a gradient. Add some floating medium so we can make that white just a little bit more translucent mm -hmm. then i'm going to flip my piece upside down and i'm going to add some white highlights I guess I made that a little too translucent. Inside this V. Yep, all around the bottom. Slightly up the side. Definitely want one side to be a little bit brighter than the other. I'm just using a uh, eight flat brush. If you want to make them bigger than this, then you can up size, but um, definitely smaller. Use a six if you want to make them a little bit tinier.
there. That's looking a little bit better. I haven't done these in a while, actually. You gotta kind of like remind yourself sometimes. But I thought, nah, we gotta have some more fun. Right? <laughs> So if you notice, guys, you're seeing bits of blue through the water, okay? You definitely want to have it some translucent areas so that you take advantage of your background, okay? Then we're going to use our little, well, not the little, but then we're going to use the um, script liner. And add little highlight areas. Didn't like that one. <laughs> Still don't like it that big. Just a little bit of a shine tick. All right, so what do you think of my splash marks? little bubbles and what I like to do too is add a bit more blue right so if you're gonna have to make it pop off the water a little bit more sometimes we don't always want to add more black yeah, so you can always add a little bit more of the blue shading. Blue black kind of look underneath. Yeah, there we go. That makes it a little bit softer. Don't always have to add things lighter. White, more white, more white. You gotta sometimes darken and deepen behind it. Alright, so I hope that's one of the biggest 
impacts that you got out of this project that um, besides you can make it unique and <laughs> have some options there if you want to add to it with the by the lake project and uh, I'll use these little extra details. They don't really make a difference. Right in here. Take your time and don't always have to rush a project. We don't always have to get everything done in an hour. Right? You can always just take your time and have fun with some of these projects. So hopefully you've watched me all the way through at least once. And then when you're going to paint with me, uh, then definitely you can start and stop the video. Alright, so I'll make that a little bit brighter. Just kind of like adding a little bit more to my waves. Underneath. Yeah, I almost thought it was done and I added my little signature here, but uh, I started thinking, no, it needs more, it needs more, it needs to have a little bit more. Now I gotta go and add some water drops to my original guy. Hey, what do you think? Do you like it before or after? <laughs> 